Sorry about that. Welcome back to... I've... Yeah. Welcome back, Zerke fans, to Daniel the Dawn River. We have Chorus Cars Messiah versus Quirty Throw and Orphilius. Again, we have Hover and Light Vehicle versus Light Vehicle and Jump Bot. So, as I was saying, we haven't seen a lot of Dart versus Dagger. I wasn't muted during the pause. Oh, my... <laughs> okay, whatever. Anyway, the Dart versus Dagger is... Like I said, something we haven't seen since Dart got slow beam. And clearly, it doesn't matter much because the daggers just outrange them. So, it's probably fine that I wasn't audible during that entire period that I was talking about stuff because everything I said was completely irrelevant. Actually, at this point, with the amount of hovers that, or the amount of daggers that exist, this could very well get rid of basically anything other than the commander one shot. However, the commander is also the main defender in this situation, so it's not going to matter. At the same time, Messiah is mostly just expanding. They have a few Scorchers there to help support, but by, by and large, they just have their expansions going. Their quills and such. And that's because Corvus Quarks is taking care of all the harassment as these darts are finding Pyros and death. Fiery, burning, hot death. One metal extractor between them, and otherwise a perfect defense from the southeast side. So well done there. And we do actually see darts are having quite the advantage against daggers if they can get that first shot in. And the daggers don't have their lance up. Because if they can shoot, then the darts will all die at once. Well, the darts are slightly faster. And then slow down. And then stop anyone from living. And then get killed because that dagger is about to reload. Oh no! What the heck's happened to the reload? Okay, slow interact with dagger reload very oddly. That might need some looking at. I'm... I don't know if that's intentional, but the reload be the reload bar just got weird. At any rate, at this point, Southeast managing to hold their own, but Northwest has taken advantage of the opportunity to expand. They've got the South, they got the Western side being taken. Corvus Corus got a nice defensive line, and I'm not sure if they're actually going to be taking anything more than that. It looks like they're intending to split the map north south, because very clearly we have we have Messiah going over to the northeast as well as Corvus Corax. But no one's really putting pressure on the southwest. That seems to be given to Orphilius at this point. No, never mind. No, 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 no. Corvus Quarks just wanted to have a line to fall back to. So they actually are going for the, the southwest. That being said, the northeast, it looks like Orphilius will have that on lock. So overall, the northeast and southwest, it's going to be an east-west split, not a north-south split. Assuming it goes the way I assume it will, and it's not even clear that's going to happen, because right now, we're seeing a lot of units being sacrificed by northwest to southeast, and southeast is getting their reclaim on. So by now, I would expect that Southeast is pretty much even. I mean, it's pretty much, it's almost entirely even right now. We have, yeah, a bit more metal produced by Northwest. Quite a bit more used, actually, by Northwest, but the attrition is massively in favor of Southeast. So unit value is neck and neck. At this point, it's going to come down to positioning. It's going to come down to where people choose to expand and how people choose to defend those expansions. And our is going in with their commander. They're... We saw them last game also be considerably more aggressive with their commander, and it paid off in that game. And again, here, going in, just face, just hitting them in the face with their face with rockets. And those face rockets are doing a fine job stopping the expansion, but again, this is why Corvus Corax built these defenders first. It gives them another line to fall back to. And actually, at this point, with all the, all the reclaim coming in, looks like Corvus Corax is going to be just fine economically for now, but not a major focus on it. There's not enough reclaim to really make that work. At the same time, though, Southeast, they've got their overdrive going. They have quite a lot of metal, a lot of metal extractors. But mostly it's just the overdrive. They have a lot of power plants here. We see the Southeast. Southeast has spread out their cellular collectors, so they got a lot more overdrive and a lot of different metal extractors. While Northwest has all their overdrive essentially on one metal extractor. Rather than spreading it out. I'm hoping we'll see pylons fairly shortly, but right now, this is the only metal extractor that has any overdrive, is up here. It's got, you know, one and a half times over... No, not even that. One and three quarters times overdrive. But that's not gonna help. So that's actually putting the Northwest at a slight... Not quite a disadvantage, but they could be farther ahead if they built more power plants more spread out. I would really like to see them do that, or at least set up pylons to get all the metal extractors in the overdrive circles. Especially once the fusion is done. I mean, it's pretty clear that Messiah is very much a large teams player, considering the way that they're building up, the, considering the way that they're setting everything up for their for their base, for the power infrastructure, everything. Which is a bit dangerous, because if we get an air switch, we are going to see that entire section be completely destroyed, and the fusion reactor right next to the factory there 
That is dangerous. 2400 damage. It's enough that if the factory was damaged, not it had to be about half HP, it would die, but then two fusion reactors? Uh, no, that's... Yeah, that factory's dead. If the fusion reactors die, the factory dies. Because the fusion reactors will not survive the other's explosion. So right now, a massive weakness has been set up in the northwest corner, and it's really up to the southeast to take advantage of it, but it looks like the southeast is much more focused on a frontal assault. Or affiliates with their commander and a bunch of fencers, getting themselves as forward as possible, while the maces really can't do much, and fencers are quite strong against them. I mean, they can just outrange them easily. Or Phyllis's commander, on the other hand, is actually not doing so hot, despite the fact that they do have the range for this. The maces are too fast, forcing Ophelius's commander back and basically causing everything to fall apart. However, at the same time, that's Corvus Korax's commander completely destroyed. So Orphelius manages to survive the mace assault and manages to get back. Nicely done. But at this point, it's going to be a problem for Northwest if they can't push forward, because like I said, they have a massive economic advantage they could easily have. If they weren't just focusing on this one metal extractor, if they spread that around... Oh, this is frustrating me. I would love to see them spread this around. I'd love to see some pylons built around here, or even just having some solar collectors here and there helping out with some of these metal extractors. That would at the very least mean all that energy is going to overdrive. But, no. What the... Oh. Huh. Yeah, get the get the geoplan. I'm how new is Messiah? Oh, Messiah is fairly new. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, geo geothermal plants are way cheaper than fusion. It's just there's no comparison. Like geothermal plants, see here, geo plants cost half a fusion reactor. They generate about as much power. Like, they generate about two thirds the power. The downside is they have to be built on geo vents, but the northeast they got the geo vent under control. And also, at this point, Northwest has so much more power than they need. They are not producing enough to make that power worthwhile. And they certainly aren't really set up enough to actually work. Like, they need more power. They need more metal. They need to... Over no, more power. More build power. And they need more overdrive. They need to spread this around. I don't know why we haven't seen that, but... Pylons, man. Pylons. If they had pylons, they would be way ahead economically. For the amount of energy they have, 120 some odd energy spread across all these metal extractors, considering this is, what, 220%? Yeah, that'd be spread across. That would probably be about 150% for everything, or plus 100% for everything. So essentially, all these metal extractors would double. So their economy would effectively double. If they, if they pile on around, they would be way ahead of Southwest. Or so Southeast. And Southeast is just... They're rolling over them, just slowly but surely, getting the unit value advantage and making it pay off. It's a 2.5k unit value advantage, which could easily be turned around with some power, or some build power, with some overdrive. But, yeah, that's a lesson to be learned here. Don't just build your power in the back line. So it's pretty clear that this game was pretty much entirely an educational game for Messiah. I really just, I picked this because I thought, oh, you know, the players I know should be relatively even. It's not been too bad. It has been very educational. This is, like I said, a lesson in what not to do. Don't build your power in the back line like this. This is not how you win games. It's how you lose games slowly. It's not how you win games. There's a massive difference between the two. But at the very least, that should give Messiah something to know and something to learn from and hopefully make him a better player. Also, we get to see the orange, which we never see. And I'm not sure how easy it is to, for you guys to see because that doesn't compress well. It's very close to the ground color. Yeah, how often do we see orange in an overdrive grid? This is what? Plus two, yeah, plus 200% on a single metal extractor. Man, so much money they could have if they overdrive all these metal extractors. So much money. All the money. Also, I'm not sure why Messiah isn't putting the Ravagers with the rivers. That, like, put them together. Go together with them. You deal loads of damage. But yeah, at this point, it's pretty much over. So at this point, it is game, but hey, we learned something. That was actually kind of unintentional. Is that... That was nine, right? Yeah, nine, okay. I forgot I had that bound. The third-person track unit thing. That's actually a thing you can do. Those of you not aware, you can click on a unit, and then look at it from behind, and see what it's doing, and it's actually kind of hard to work with, because it doesn't really show you what's in front of it. It's also just seven, which gets you closer, but you can zoom out. Yeah, that's a thing you can do. 
Well, okay, I have it set to seven. It's like, I think it's control K and control T or something by default. Some, some control combination. Anyway, yeah. This is, why is this not over? This is over. Like, I'm, I'm speeding it up because, like, it's very clearly over. <laughs> well, or Felix, the, their opponent is demanding that they attack. It's like, or not demanding, it's requesting they attack. Because it's like, what are you going to do? What can you do? It's, this game's over. Please, just die. Or fight, or something. Make something happen. I need to have some activity. I need some stimulation in my life. Something like that. And that is game. We have a what turned what started out fairly even in terms of metal, just getting stagnated in its own base. But yeah, that is a common that's a common new player mistake. That is a thing that could be much, much improved because it's a new player mistake. You just you get caught up in the idea that you got to build economy and you're stuck in your base and you're kind of afraid because there's all these unknown things and everywhere outside of your base is a here be dragons and eh, it's just scary. So I totally get it. At the same time, though, it's important to expand. It's important to fight, especially when you have that much energy. Like, it's important to spread your metal. Even regardless of expansion, just spread your metal around or spread your overdrive around. If you do that, your metal is going to be perfect because Northwest, for the amount of overdrive they had, they could, and the amount of energy they had, they could have easily had twice the metal income. But that being said, the win's a win. So, the next match is going to be, I think possibly the last match, is going to be Orphelius and Wesley Boss on Ravaged. So, back to 1v1. Next week, of course, is going to be the 2v2 tournament, which will be happening at the same time. Because I couldn't convince anyone to make it earlier. So, yeah, we're going to be having the 2v2 tournament, monthly tournament, on March 3rd at the same time. So, 11 PST, 7 UTC, 7 PM UTC, 1900 UTC. That'll be the tournament. But for now, it is going to be just a match between Orphelius and Wesley. And I realized that my bottom bar has been showing completely the wrong information for this entire time for two weeks. I'm starting to think I need to find a different way of setting this up because that bottom bar has been useless. Can't believe how useless it's been. Sorry about that. Ah. Anyway. We have, yes, the next match for this Wesley, Ravaged. Stay tuned. Back in a sec.